Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, in this video, we're gonna have a look at a piece of Heathkit gear, the ID4101 electronic switch. So what is an electronic switch? Well, it's an accessory to an oscilloscope. And it does pretty much what it sounds like it does. It electronically switches something. Well, what does it switch? Well, it switches between one of two inputs to your single channel oscilloscope, turning it into a dual channel oscilloscope. We'll get into this in more detail when I take it down to the bench and show you a demo of it working. But uh, let's, let's think back for a moment to uh, when the oscilloscope first came around. Hot on the heels of the invention of the CRT, uh, we naturally had the oscilloscope. And the way an oscilloscope works is, uh, okay, you have a, a CRT an electron beam that is scanning across the CRT rapidly, starting from the left, moving across to the right. And then the uh, vertical direction of that electron beam is controlled by an input voltage. That's what you're watching or what you're measuring is that input voltage. Uh, something like a sine wave, for example, um, as it swings positive and then swings negative, while that trace is moving across, you get a nice drawing basically on the CRT of a sine wave. If you were to feed audio into the oscilloscope, say for example, my voice, you'd actually see the waveform of my speech as I'm talking on the oscilloscope. Isn't that neat? You probably have seen that in some old sci-fi movies, say they're on a spaceship's control council or something, or when the computer would speak, you'd see that. Pretty cool. So, um, Back when oscilloscopes came out, most of them were, were single trace, single channel. One input, one trace. Later on, there were uh, CRTs made with two electron beams, and they would double the input circuitry of the oscilloscope, and they'd create two traces, so you could feed two channels into the oscilloscope, a two-channel oscilloscope. Um, they were pretty expensive compared to a single-channel scope, probably because they had to duplicate all that input circuitry. Um, Somewhere along the line, somebody had the brilliant idea to make what, this electronic switch. Okay, the early ones were made with tubes. And, but what it does is it takes two inputs and it alternates between them. It traces the trace across the oscilloscope twice as fast. And one time it feeds it channel A. This next time it feeds it channel B. And then just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then to allow you to see both traces at the same time, since they're laying over the top of each other, uh, it applies a DC offset voltage to the input signal. So let's say on channel A, it applies a positive offset voltage. The waveform stays the same, it just moves up to, let's say, one or two volts up on the scale. And then it applies a negative offset voltage to the B channel, and that waveform moves down, and voila, you have a two-channel oscilloscope. Well, you have one channel oscilloscope, but you have two input channels. So that's what an electronic switch does. It allows you to take the cheaper one channel oscilloscope and turn it into a two channel oscilloscope with this external device. So I'm gonna take this electronic switch down to the bench and we will do a demo and show you how it works. Well, it's a sad day for me. This is my dad's old single trace Heath kit oscilloscope. Model IO4555. The last time I used it was back in November. Um, had it at a ham fest and was demoing it and it was working okay. And it sat on the shelf since and I powered it up tonight in order to do this demo of the electronic switch. And it took me about a half an hour to air out the basement. The cloud of white smoke that I got out of it immediately was incredible. The power transformer uh, blew. <laughs> I'd read that that was a known failure mode on these guys. I had no idea how dramatic it was going to be. So, the old girl is dead. I might look for a power transformer for it someday, I might not. It's been patched and patched and patched as components have failed, and uh, I think it's just time to put the old girl out to pasture and, uh, and uh, declare her a donor 
for uh, components for other things. So, to carry on with the demo, I have my old Heathkit audio function generator sitting over here, generating two signals, a sine wave and a square wave. I've got those fed into the electronic switch. And uh, let's see here. Okay, so these are the inputs coming from the uh, audio generator. I've got both inputs set to the 10 volt range. And uh, the sync output from input A is going to external trigger on the uh, oscilloscope. And you'll see the output here is going to channel one input on the oscilloscope. So we are only looking at one channel on the scope, right? Now, presently I've got the selector switch on channel B. So we're looking at the B input, which is a square wave. If I switch that to A, now we're looking at the A input, which is a sine wave. Now, if we go into switching mode, we have two signals. Now, <laughs> on an analog oscilloscope, the uh, switch transition would happen so quickly that you wouldn't see the trace jump from one side to the other. But here you can kind of see a little flash occasionally, a little line drawn between the two as the uh, trace is jumping from uh, down here up there during a switch cycle. If I speed up the switching, now it's happening so often that you can, you can see a lot of it. So I've got a switching speed yeah, we lose a little stability there. I don't think the trigger was too happy. There we go. So at that speed, switching speed, I'm seeing a fairly stable representation of both waveforms. On a single channel into the scope, it's, it's tracing, switching to this channel, tracing, switching back. Um, and uh, that's how it works, pretty much. I've got gain controls on the individual inputs here I can adjust, so I can increase the, the gain on one of the inputs. Um, I have a separation control. Now this controls the DC offset that's being applied to the inputs. Um, right now on the A upside, uh, input A is getting a positive offset, which is moving it up on this display, and input B is getting a negative offset, which is moving it down. If I rotate that control, you'll see the two waveforms converge until I get to the zero point where there's no offset on either one. Now it's switching between the two inputs, but they're in the same place. Now if I move the control in the other direction, we start to apply a positive offset to channel B and a negative offset to channel A, causing the waveforms to shift. So that's how an electronic switch would work with an old single channel uh, oscilloscope. Um, yeah, on the old scope, you didn't. it was much cleaner. You didn't see this flickering occasionally. You didn't see that little vertical line between the two occasionally. Like I said, the uh, trace was moving so quickly when it was jumping up or down that, that it didn't uh, illuminate the phosphor well enough to be seen. The digital scope is just capturing data fast enough that it's catching those transitions and, and displaying them. But hey, this has got two inputs anyway. If I want two traces, I'd, uh, I'd use the second input. Curiously enough, I imagine that there would be no problem at all with using the second input and actually having three inputs uh, going on this scope at the same time using the electronic switch. Um, so there you go. That's how it works. Uh, it's a neat old piece of gear and it uh, did solve a problem back in the day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.